if you give Tiger Woods to me for two weeks, maybe I could put him right back on the top. <laughs> Golf was born in the Western world, but the nature of the game has often led golfers to look east. Sadhguru is about the last guy you'd expect to encounter in the golf world. He's this spiritual leader with a massive following. He goes around on a global scale teaching meditation and yoga, lecturing at the UN. But he's also a 14 handicap and a passionate golfer. He brings his clubs everywhere he goes. From halftime prayers to players thanking God after a winning performance, we've seen Christianity be a part of basketball, football, and baseball. But where golf is different is a player is out there for five hours alone trying to concentrate in an endlessly frustrating game. And that's why they're looking for answers on better mind-body coordination. And meditation and this extreme focus is a huge pillar of Eastern thought. When Tiger Woods is on top of the world, he wore a string bracelet blessed by a monk. There was all this speculation that his Buddhist upbringing, fostered by his mother, Tita, who is Thai, was responsible for this seemingly magic ability for him to focus under pressure. While Tiger would never comment on any special powers of concentration, he did say the bracelet brought him protection and strength when he was playing. Then you have one of the most widely read golf books ever, Golf in the Kingdom which was this mystical novel by Michael Murphy that spawned the Shiva's Iron Society, which was this sort of occult organization whose members try to achieve Zen through golf. Then, of course, the most famous intersection has got to be Caddyshack. And I get on as a looper at a course over there in Himalayas. And who do you think they give me? The Dalai Lama himself. But while all these were works of fiction, we found the genuine article, Sadhguru. For me, golf is a certain sense of geometry about the land on which you're walking, about your own body, about the way you hold the club. Because it's a sitting ball and why is it not going the way you want it? You're somewhere getting the geometry all wrong. Sadhguru is wary of the ways modern yoga studios compartmentalize certain aspects of Eastern thought while ignoring others. See, first of all, we must get this idea out. There is something called as meditation. There is no such thing. You can become meditative. If you cultivate your body, if you cultivate your mind, your emotions and your energy to a certain level of maturity, you will become meditative because you could be praying and thinking of many things. But you can't kick or hit a ball unless you're absolutely involved. The intensity of involvement is a must for a game. This is something every human being has to learn. In every activity, the intensity of involvement is what gets us to our best and a game gives us that opportunity. Oh, what a shot! Thanks. I had the unique opportunity of playing with Sadhguru and we talked about a lot of big ideas, but what I found most immediately useful was his advice to pay more attention to my breath. Out on the golf course, your breath is about the one thing you can control. And by breathing more evenly, That'll translate to smoother tempo and better shots. The way you think is the way you breathe. And also the way you breathe is the way you think. If a certain amount of work is done on your breath, keeping your mind alert and calm becomes a very natural possibility. So consciously bringing your breath to a certain level of measure will also bring your mind to a certain balance and tranquility. If there's one takeaway, it's this reassurance that golf is a worthwhile pursuit. Here's a guy who has reached enlightenment, who travels the world battling deforestation and poverty, building schools, teaching meditation and yoga on a massive scale to try to save humanity from despair, and yet he still values the importance of playing games. A lot of people in Sadhguru's world are surprised that he plays what's perceived to be such a bourgeois game. But Sadhguru makes the point that we shouldn't take ourselves so seriously, and that the true meaning of existence is to explore one's potential in as many ways as possible, and games are perfect for this. So this idea that playing a game for four hours is a waste of time, I think one biggest problem with a lot of people is they've become so dead serious about their life that they are not a game for life. But human beings don't live on bread alone. Other aspects of life are needed. 
If you go like this, what is useful, not is useful, you will cut away all the flower gardens because they are not useful, you can plant vegetables instead of that. You will take away dance and music because that's a waste of time. You will do only mathematics and computer science <laughs> No, that's not the way to handle life. Life involves many ingredients, this is just one more game and uh, it's an excellent game. <laughs>